Hi, it's Ross Hoare here from Inframanage.com and this morning I'm here with Derek Roo who is representing IDS and we're looking at the date and water model which is an optimised decision model and in a few minutes Derek's going to take us through how this model works which I'm really looking forward to. Thanks for coming along Derek. Thank you, it's and nice I'm, being here. Yeah, and I'm really looking forward to just seeing how this model works and you explaining it to us. What I would like to explain to you today is a representation of optimised decision making uh, with this mod water model. Dayton has developed this water model um, to explain what, it, what the effic effects of a deteriorating asset into conditions have on your investment. What we have here is four buckets representing four typical conditions of an asset. At the top one side, we've got a very good condition, a fair, a poor, and a very poor condition. Inside the buckets, we have water, which represents our asset. These assets then deteriorate from very good to fair, to poor, to very poor as time goes along. And you can see then on the side of the buckets, the water just flows down to the bottom bucket. In order for us to recover our assets to a very good condition, and in this model, we have got pumps inside of these buckets representing the investment necessary to recover or restore our assets to a very good condition. At the bottom end, we've got a very big pump. As you understand, it takes much more energy for the water to be pumped up to the top bucket from the bottom. That represents then now investment necessary to restore our assets. You will need a lot more money to restore your assets to a very good condition. In the middle two buckets, you can see that the pumps are smaller in the fair condition bucket and then a bit bigger in the, in the uh, poor condition bucket. Our ideal is to catch, a, when a, an asset is deteriorating down to the very poor condition, to catch this asset before it's costing us too much to restore this asset to a very good condition. If we could maintain our assets in these three buckets, we'll have the optimal um, solution to our network management. I, I thought it would be useful now just for me to ask a few questions about this model and, and get some answers for our viewers. Um, so this model is based on the Dayton's DTIM software that IDS is using. The principle that they've ingrained into the software, yes. Okay. They have um, thought about it and tried to explain it in a simple way, and yeah. this is what they came up with. Yeah. And, and so just, to, just so we're really clear going through the model, this is, this is your very good condition assets up the top here? Yes. And then obviously as time and use goes on, assets will drop down to good and then to maybe to fair condition and then to very poor condition. Indeed. Yeah, and, and we're just, um, I, we're both aware there's quite a few studies being done around the world now around just the, the difference that catching assets at this sort of area as opposed to letting them go down here, uh, makes in terms of um, the, the overall cost of managing those assets. Do you want to just talk about yeah, some of this? I, um, yeah, look, it's very important to try and intervene as early as possible. We're talking about preventive maintenance, which yep. is a great principle of asset management. Yep. Um, I have been exposed to studies where if uh, the assets were left to deteriorate to the very poor condition, that it cost, can cost up to 10 times um, the amount of money or investment um, compared to had we intervened early. Right, so, so that big pump size that you're, you're representing down here could in fact be 10 times the expenditure cost yeah. as opposed to here or the smaller pumps. So that's really significant. And these are quite scientific studies, aren't they? They're, they've done a lot of analysis and... Well, what yeah. they've done is they've actually um, had networks deteriorate to that point. Right. And so it's quite practical. It's not just, yep. you know, um, a desktop study that they've done. Yeah, so... If, if you've got a network or you're managing a network that's down in this range here, I guess the thing is, it's, is you've got to do some work to demonstrate to your decision makers, hey, we need to spend some money. But, uh, you know, that, that, that difference is, is so hugely significant. So that's why we're, we're quite keen on getting the word out about these optimised decision yeah. models. Look, Roz, and when we have a lot of assets down in that very poor or poor conditions, um, the, the immediate expectation is to go and, and fix all of that and yep. focus all the money there. But it's like a bushfire. Yeah. Once it's burnt, it's burnt. It's not going to get burnt more. So there's ne never a better time than now um, to start preventive maintenance. Yeah. So yes, we need to grab some of those assets back into a very good condition, but 
in the same while, you still have assets that deteriorate, and we need to intervene at the appropriate times. Yeah, and so one of the things I'm really aware of the work that IDS has been doing is this difference between worst first intervention, which is the stuff down here, so it's, this is terrible, I need to intervene now because it's the worst, versus a more optimised model. And, and again, I know there's some studies around about that, Derek. Can you just explain the differences you've seen using these sorts of concepts between worst first versus an optimised intervention in terms of what it's doing. Indeed, uh, Ross, that was a very interesting study that we've done. Um, what we have done is compared a network um, looking forward into 15 to 20 years, yep. and um, we an analyzed the conditions um, of the network moving forward. If we would just do worse first, like you say, just yep. prioritize, you know, whatever is the worst on my network year by year, yep. um, compared to an optimized decision-making um, program which has been done in such a way. And what we found is, um, in the short term, you might have an, a, a visible increase in condition on your network, but on the longer term, you waste so much money in routine maintenance on those poorer assets. Yep. As if, if you intervene early, that's a big saving. And routine maintenance is actually the big hole into which you waste your money into. Yeah, so, so that's, and, and those again, scientific studies with, with quite, quite well controlled and things like that. Yes. So for, for our viewers, for people looking in here uh, from New Zealand and, and around the world, the, the key message from this model, from IDS, is that if you let your assets get down here, it's a lot of energy, a lot of dollars to get them back up to any sort of condition. And this, this range in here, this between good and fair condition back up to very good, is the optimal range to work in. And, yes. and we've got these tools and this expertise now to allow that to happen, this model's a model that demonstrates that process. Roz, we've got a very good example at the moment here. We've got such a lot of our asset in the very poor condition and very little in the very good. Yep. And what I have to do now, I need to invest quite a bit. Turn that pump on. Yep. Turn this pump on, have it full blast, pumping all of this water back. And you can see the full flow of the water there, yep. just trying to eradicate some of my assets in a very poor condition yep. or um, eradicate those very poor conditions. Uh, and just to remember in transportation networks or even water networks, this is, this is lots of potholes, lots of angry, slow traffic, hold ups. Uh, water networks, it's lots of breaks, lots of overflows, things Indeed, like yes. that. So this is not where a, a municipal engineer or a, or a highway engineer ever wants to be. It's, it's very poor service that you're providing. No, you so. are chasing, um, chasing a bushfire. Yeah. And um, you're never going to catch up no. if you just spend your money in your very poor conditions. Yeah. So hopefully that's been a, a, a really just quite a simple explanation of what optimised decision making is. It's not rocket science as we like to say, it's actually some very sound engineering principles, been a lot of work done on it um, in terms of thinking through these models, in terms of the, the software that's available. So Derek, one of the um, questions I hear when I'm moving around clients and at conferences and things like that is down, down here in the, in the very poor condition and in the, the worst first, everybody can see the need, you know, everything's shocking, everybody's True. complaining. Yes. And, and, but in the optimization in this area here, it's, it's less obvious and there's a challenge there. So you've again done some work in that area. Do you the want big to challenge, Rise, is motivating for funds in this area. When we go to our councillors or those um, in powers to be um, and ask for funds to repair roads in these conditions, they'd say, well, there's nothing wrong with it. Yep. So when we look at optimising our decision making and trying to get a longer term program, we will need to have a strategic view of our network and our assets. So yes, for that we will need some analysis methods, we will need to um, utilise resources such as these, yep. um, reach out to similar councils or councils in similar conditions, but it's not that obvious. You will go out to the road and you'd say, well, this, is, this doesn't need any treatment. We might just leave it, leave it for another two or three or four or five years, but that might be a wrong decision. Yeah, and, and I guess, again, knowing from discussing with colleagues, um, to some extent, running around fighting bushfires is, is feel satisfying. You know, you're doing something. Um, you're fixing an immediate problem. This, this here is a bit of a longer term view, but, but from an engineering point of view, a far better solution. Yes, Ross, we are playing the long game. We're in this for the long haul, and we, we are working towards sustainability. So every dollar that we spend today, we need to make sure it's got longevity, and this is the place to spend it. Excellent. Uh, well, let's hope that uh, this video has given some people some ability to think about that and uh, just 
have a use these tools to, to look at what those long-term costs are. Hey, well, thanks for, um, thanks for the presentation, Derek. That's really My good. Pleasure. Look, I'd like to thank IDS and, and also Auckland University Labs for making the model and allowing us to, to shoot down here. Uh, if you want any more information about this model, just click on the links below and that'll take you to additional information. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.